Hey guys, this is Jason from Jason and Journey Builds. We're back on the 66 Bronco project today. We're going to uh, kind of fit our grill today. We ordered a Dennis Carpenter grill and we're going to see how well it fits up to all this other aftermarket steel. So you guys stay tuned. Alright guys, before we get started, y'all give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button real quick. Anyways, uh, what we what we did is we looked at our original grill and it's pretty beat up. It doesn't sit square even close to it. Uh, our uh, horizontal edge running down the grill has it's got a lot of wave to it. I'm just afraid I'm not going to get be able to get everything out where I would be satisfied with it. I'm not going to throw it away. I'm going to keep it uh, maybe for another project. But for that, for now, so we can uh, move forward with this project, we went ahead and just ordered Dennis Carpenter grill. A uh, little background on that grill. They, from what I hear, they have the original four tooling uh, to do the grill. So I figured that's going to give us our best fit. And uh, Actually, a couple of you guys had mentioned that uh, you had pretty good luck with them. A uh, few massage it here and there. So, um, but let me show you what I found. I've already kind of put it on there, so I'd have a little idea what to, <laughs> what to expect, and what to tell you guys about. But uh, we'll we'll talk about it, and I'll show you what I had to do. Okay, guys, just to show you the grill real quick. It's got the Ford stamping in it, which looks good. You know, it it does have the embossed Ford lettering in it. And it's not been up. Again, if y'all didn't remember, this was my original. Alright, so a few things that I found when I first tried to put it on was uh, they ship it in, the, in a box. It's got very little paper in it. I'm not saying that it was bad shipping, but it wasn't the best. Um, I don't. It may not have been bent from shipping it may just be when it comes out of the out of the mold but what i ended up having to do is put on a pair of gloves and pull this outer edge out you know it, it had to be pulled out just a little bit kind of tweak it on both ends so i don't know if it was sort of bounced around in the box and if this got flattened out a little bit but i know it's it's not going to be perfectly straight to the fender because they're a different manufacturer who built the aftermarket fenders that was sort of the main place I had to pull it, and I had to pull it just a little bit down here on this bottom corner, kind of pull it out uh, to match the fender. But other than that, um, it actually went on really good. So let me stick it up there and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right guys, before I uh, set this up there, if you remember, I never finished the front fenders because I wanted the grill so I could make sure I got the grill where it's supposed to be because we had this weird gap at our front support right in here and um, we still have it and so what I did earlier is I bolted it up and I still have about three-eighths of an inch gap at this top edge I was able to pull the bottom edge down with a bolt I don't know I don't really like it the biggest thing is I was gonna cut the spot welds out and just bring this whole inner piece over to it but actually these holes are correct. These holes are lining up with the grill really good. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to fix this part yet. Um, I don't like the way it fits. You don't see it. I can actually put the um, put a nut on it and, and draw it to it and you would never know it. But uh, I just kind of feel like it needs to be better than that rather than just cranking it over there. And uh, So... We'll, uh, we'll look at this a little bit more. Maybe we'll have a, have a fix for it by the end of this video. So for now, we're going to go ahead and stick it up there and see how it fits. And guys, I did opt for the new fasteners. And that way you don't have to worry about all the old rusty, all the old rusty parts. Alright. <laughs> guys, y'all going to have to bear with me. I'm sorry. I... I'm always thinking ahead 
what I need to tell you guys next and sometimes I leave steps out and I know I leave out a lot but I just realized I didn't tell you guys before you even get started with this you need to have your hood on have your hood centered squared and your fenders centered and squared and I didn't even talk to you guys about that but as you see I've got it propped up but I can let it down my gaps are right where I want them to be so now I'm sort of fitting my grill to my fenders so I apologize I still knew it this guy so please bear That's with right. me. This corner was really tight and so what I end up having to do is I just got a uh, just a piece of strong steel and I put a uh, pair of ice grips on it and hold it from the back side that way I can sort of help spring this front end over because I want this line straight right in here and then we're good here so now I can reach in behind it and tighten it down hi right, guys so I've, I've already got the clip nuts installed in the grill I didn't show you that but uh, they're in so now we'll uh, go ahead and start just getting some bolts started and then we'll kind of just start start at one end and just kind of work it down and pulling and pushing and getting it right where you want it so I just like to start at the top what you don't want you don't want your grill to be higher than your fender so what I'm doing is kind of splitting the difference because you're going to have to wipe this. This is going to have to have a little skim coat of, of Bondo filler, you know, at some point. So, you know, you, there's no getting around it. So I would rather be able to sort of contour it to the fender rather than contouring the fender to the grill. So I'll just pull it kind of close. And I had one of you guys... Uh, comment and was asking me like what do I do when I get all this fitted he said do you break it back apart well yes I, I have to but what I end up doing is once I've got I'm very satisfied with everything I'll drill pilot holes like with an eighth inch drill bit in the fenders just so I know I can put this thing exactly back where I had it all fitted you don't want to put holes where you're going to see them but uh, sometimes you can put them under a bolt or where the washer is going to cover it up but anyways it just helps you go back So, like Johnny was pointing out, she said, well, you, you've got a, a gap here. I do, but if you look right across this seam here, this is actually flush right here in this valley. So that valley is flush, so the rest of this will have to be built with filler. And you see, it sort of sits smooth right across the top there. So you just have to kind of pick where it fits the best and then just fix the rest. But uh, like right now, this is... This is out just a little bit. I can actually look down it. So what I'll do is sort of pull on the fender and then I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this, this second bolt down. One bolt right in here, one here, here and here. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this one down. Okay, that's that one. Now I'm gonna come to this one. It needs to go in just a little. Now the bottom one, I'll let Johnny come around here and you'll see it. You see how it's my fender starting to dive in behind it and then the grill is actually higher. So what I have to do now is I'm going to have to pull the fender back out and tighten this bolt down. This is about as good as I could get it to fit. You know, this will be pre-filler. So you can see, it's got a little ridge. We have our little ridge at the top, but it actually, it actually rolls with this, this fender. And you guys gotta remember, these are aftermarket parts built by different companies. So there, it's, the fit's about as good as you're gonna get. You know, it's, it's not gonna, not going to be any better. Then you have some little struts, some support struts that go under here too. I'm not putting them on yet. Um, I'm more worried about getting all this right. 
All right, we're going to repeat uh, the steps on the passenger side. I'm going to start with the top bolt and then we'll just sort of move it down. You can see this side fits much better. The driver side, the driver side is pretty tight, but this one goes right on. This is kind of the imperfections if you look right down through here, Johnny. Take the camera up here, a little bit higher. There you go. You can see some of these imperfections that are in the stamping. This is why you know it's. Don't expect to be able to put this on without filler and massaging a little. They they fit nice, but they're they're not perfect. Alright, so we've got our sides on. We need to put our support in, our hood support. Let's go ahead and get it uh, bolted into place. And we'll let the hood down and see how that's looking. Guys, it's just the old stock latch assembly. What I would do is kind of loosely bolt it so you make sure you get your, your pin set, up, set straight into it before you lock it down. Hey, right, look up. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Uh, me and Joni didn't quite get finished yesterday. We had family in this weekend. So uh, Madison came out here with me this afternoon and we're going to just show you what we did. Just finishing up on those uh, inner fenders. Uh, the little places I was telling you I was a little concerned with because of the wide gap. But um, I think it turned out that it really wasn't a problem at all. So, or I'm not going to sweat it anyways. <laughs> so you guys tell me what you think. But um, I'm, I'm pretty convinced that I'm just going to leave it like it is. So uh, let me show you guys what I've got, and we'll let Madison be my little camera operator. Okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hello, people in the universe. In the universe. <laughs> See you, girl. Okay, guys, the area that I was concerned with is right in here. I'm sorry, I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way. Um, right in here, the inner fender to the radiator support. It had a about a three eighths of an inch gap and then it tapered down to almost nothing at the bottom so anyways uh, it's really wide at the top and it's just one flat broke piece of metal it's not attached to the top or the bottom so I, I really don't feel like it's a problem because as soon as you put the bolts in it it just pulls it right over to it you have just a little gap here and I'm, I'm just not going to sweat it you know you don't see it once all this thing's put together, it's, I don't think it's worth going through all the trouble of cutting it, moving it a quarter inch, and welding it up. So, I might change my mind down the road, but right now, uh, I'm, I'm satisfied with it, with the way these things fit, because the other side is actually a little bit closer. This is the worst. Okay guys, and on the driver's side here, the same thing. It's, uh, it's not bad at all. Honestly, you know, me looking at it right here, I can't even tell. It's got a gap. I have to reach in there and feel it. It's about an eighth of an inch. As far as the the fit of the Dennis Carpenter grill, I love it. Looks real good. Well, guys, I hope I've been able to uh, show you the Dennis Carpenter grill and the install and what you might can expect if you get your own. It uh, really wasn't it wasn't bad. Uh, just you know, tweaking in a couple areas, uh, pull it down tight, you know, across the bottom edge where it hits the fender. It had to pull that, just that little lip down just a little bit so it matched the fender. This will be a good part. Uh, this, uh, as soon as we start body work, that, that, this piece is ready to go. So uh, I'm, I'm glad I don't have to worry about that now. Just uh, another check on my check sheet of things to do. <laughs> so uh, thank you guys very much for uh, sticking with me and uh, watching these videos and uh, supporting our channel. 
it means a lot and uh, it's uh, it gets tough sometimes uh, trying to keep content. <laughs> We're working as hard as we can, fast as we can, and bear with us. Until next time, y'all have a great day. Take care.